450. Okay, that, that's kind of the right answer, but if you want to be like really right with your answer, there's some other variables you need to consider, and we need to talk about combat encounter difficulty. You may be familiar with CR, or the challenge rating. This is a number given to a monster that represents the difficulty your party might have against them. At a glance, this should give you an idea of how powerful a creature is. A good rule of thumb is that a 1 CR creature is about a medium difficulty for a party of 4 level 1 characters. This and all the other equations scale up as your players level up. But stop, don't, don't do any math, there is a better way. You see, challenge rating is actually just an attempt to simplify the actual difficulty grading system used in D&D. When a creature is created, the, the great wizard coast people decide that there are a certain number of experience points players should get for killing that creature. XP is a direct correlation to difficulty as interpreted by the creators of the game. But now you're saying, Jake, this is even more complicated. Why are you doing this to us, bud? Ah! <laughs> You see, this was all a decoy, a ploy, in order to talk about Kobold Fight Club. This is an awesome free site that does all the combat encounter calculations for you so you can free your mind to more important matters. Let me show you how it works. First, you want to put your group information in. For this example, we're going to have a party of four players, all at level one, but you can also add players at different levels right here. You can see on the right here, it shows the difficulty, and based on the group information, it calculates the experience points needed to get to that difficulty. The rules help to describe and detail exactly how these difficulties are expected to turn out for your players. So you probably want to avoid deadly, unless you have a party of monks. Monks are already overpowered. They deserve death. Another useful number is the daily budget. This is the recommended maximum amount of experience points and encounters your players could deal with in between long rests. Unless they're monks, of course, because monks can just take short rests and they count as long rests, basically. So <sighs> don't give them any rest. An example of a full day would be an easy encounter, followed by four medium encounters, and finally a hard one. Although saving the most difficult encounter for the end is kind of a dick move. Personally, I usually fill the day with more roleplay or traveling, so I rarely get to this max number, but it's a good number to know. The real deal though comes with encounter information. This is where Kobold Fight Club does a bulk of its work. You simply select a difficulty, and it will generate a random encounter at that difficulty for your party. Nice. You can edit the number of monsters right here, so if you only want one creature at medium difficulty, we'll get this dude. But let's say in this case we don't mind having up to four monsters, and actually we want this encounter to be hard. Now they might give us multiple creatures with varying XP to get to our difficulty. Another aspect to encounter calculations is when you're fighting multiple enemies. While the total XP is the sum of the XP for all the creatures, you multiply that number by a factor to create the adjusted XP. So a higher adjusted XP implies a higher difficulty, because if you think about it, fighting multiple creatures that are all moving around and doing stuff is a bit more difficult than if it's just one creature you can all focus your efforts on. If you have only one enemy, you can see that the adjusted XP is the same as the total XP. The last two tricks up the Kobold sleeve are the monster database and filter settings. This has every monster or creature the beach wizards have deemed worthy of combating, and there are a number of filters you can use to find the best monsters for your encounters. Size, type, min and max CR ratings are all great. My personal favorite is the environment filter, as I'm usually trying to figure out how to fill out a specific geographical area on my party's route. After you set the filter settings, you can scroll through the creatures, add the ones you fancy, check what sort of difficulty it's going to be for your party, or you can just click the random encounter button again, and it will present only the creatures from your filtered list. Kabul Fight Club is really fantastic. They simplified a complex balancing mechanic so much that I can 
during a campaign, if I haven't prepared enough, quickly, you know, in 10 seconds, create a combat situation for my players. I think the best thing about it though is that it really helps inspire some combat situations and it helps to make your enemies a bit more diverse so it keeps your players more entertained in combat. But you know what? I still don't think my answer at the beginning of the video was good enough. Now that we know this information, let's properly answer it. So baboons have a challenge rating of zero, but more importantly, they reward 10 XP each time you kill one. If you have a party of just two level one players, it may only take seven baboons for a deadly encounter. That's great news, that's totally doable. But let's say you're stuck with a group of four people all at level 20. Well now you've got yourself into quite the pickle as it will likely take 1,270 baboons to create a deadly situation for your players. That's over 50,000 adjusted XP in total and it's gonna be quite the bloodbath, I can tell you that. Oh no, the absolute worst situation. You're coming back with your softball team after a nice game on the pitch and they all wanna play a level 21 shot and you just want them to leave your house. So to create a deadly encounter that will likely kill 12 players all at level 20 will require 5,080 baboons. So the more correct answer to how many baboons does it take to kill your players? Well, likely it's between 7 and 5,080. Thanks for watching.